Hello and welcome on the front, the place where we discuss all things World War II and I bring you to these sites today. My name is Matt and on today's episode we're going to be exploring what remains of the Berlin Flak Tower network. I'm currently in Humboldt Hein, standing next to what is called the Klein Bunker, a small section that remains of Flak Tower number no. 3 and is today actually used as a rock climbing wall. So, why were these Nazi megastructures built? Well, with the value of hindsight and the subsequent bombing of Berlin, it seems obvious why such air defences would be needed. But, before the 25th of August 1940, the very thought that Berlin could be bombed seemed impossible. In fact, Hermann Goering, the chief of the German Air Force, actually promised Hitler that if the Reich was to ever to be bombed, that he would change his name to Meyer. The first bombing mission out of Berlin occurred on the 25th of August 1940 and was in essence an act of revenge over a bombing of, of London that had occurred the night before. During the Battle of Britain, Hitler had ordered that London be off limits to Berlin bombing targets and that only Royal Air Force uh, air bases be the ones that are targeted. But however, on the 24th, a Berlin bomber drifted off course and accidentally released its bombs over the city of London. This of course enraged Winston Churchill who immediately ordered that Berlin be attacked in response. He sent 95 bombers across the channel uh, but because it was early days in, in bomber command the bombing was relatively ineffectual. Only 81 of the 95 bombers managed to drop their payloads and the damage was relatively minimal. In fact all they really did was manage to, to kill uh, the only elephant in the Berlin Zoo. But the psychological effect was far more important. Hitler who was in raged, uh, promised that a uh, huge revenge attacks against London and it would ultimately spark what be events that became known as the Blitz. Hitler ordered that Berlin be defended uh, from potential air attacks and ordered that six flak term towers be constructed. But as the war dragged on and resources became more and more scarce, only three towers were ultimately constructed. The towers themselves were constructed in a triangle defence with interlocking and mutual fire support making them formidable air defences. So what remains of, these, of this defence system today? Follow me and let's find out. I'm currently standing in the gun pit of Tower G on top of the Flak Tower number no. 3 in Humboldt Hein, and what is uh, by far the most preserved Flak Tower in the city today. Uh, the tower itself was constructed in six months, from October 1941 to April 1942, with some 800 forced labourers and was designed to protect the manufacturing sector of Berlin. The Flak Tower No. 3, like its predecessors 1 and 2, was designed with two towers. Tower L, which housed the radio and observation point, and Tower G, which housed the main armaments. Tower L was equipped with 40 20mm machine guns, and Tower G was equipped with 16 20mm machine guns, uh, as well as 8 128mm anti-aircraft cannons. These cannons were the only weapon in the German arsenal that could reach out to touch the long-range British uh, and American Allied bombers at 35,000 feet. The towers themselves could fire up to 8,000 rounds per minute, making them formidable air defences. The towers, though, were not just designed uh, to destroy aircraft, but also to protect the civilian population of Berlin and were designed to house some 10,000 civilians. Although, in the latter stages of the war, this would see almost twice that amount cram into these dark and humid spaces. These fortresses were impregnable and the Soviet attempts during the battle of the city to destroy the bunkers were seemingly um, futile. Uh, even firing their 203mm howitzers at point blank range had very little effect and as such these complexes were some of the last to surrender during the fighting. The um, bunker complex after the war found itself under the responsibility of the French who tried to have it destroyed but botched the effort only destroying the southern half of the tower. Further efforts to destroy the rest of the, of, of the bunker was considered too dangerous as it could potentially damage the Gesundbrunnen train station which was under Soviet control and spark an international incident. As such, they tried to bury the bunker, forming an artificial hill into what is creatively known today uh, as the Humboldt Hein Hill. After German reunification, the site was deemed to be safe and it was turned into an observation point where Berliners and tourists alike come to this area to get a great view uh, of the city itself. Um, the, the bunkers though didn't just house people and anti-aircraft systems but also housed some of Berlin's and Germany's most prized um, pieces of artwork and Flak Tower No. 2 would see itself at the centre of an international art heist. 
I'm currently sitting on what remains of Flak Tower No. 2 in Volks Park, Friedrichshain. Now, what made this tower so special is that it was used to house some of Germany's, and indeed the world's, most important pieces of art. Some 1,659 pieces were stored here, including the works of Caravaggio, Donatello and Botticelli. Um, it was no secret that the Nazis were fervent in their efforts to plunder some of Europe's greatest masterpieces, to bring them back here to Berlin, to fulfill Hitler's dreams of turning uh, the Reich's capital, which he planned on renaming Germania, into the world capital for art, history and culture. The Soviets, though, went at art theft with the same level of vigour, under Stalin's motto that if you steal a country's um, uh, art, you remove their identity. Um, by May of 1945, the Soviets had stolen some reported two million pieces of art valued in the billions. So what happened to the art that was stored here? Well, the details get a little bit hazy. According to the Soviets, a fire broke out on May 6 on the lower levels, destroying all the art that was stored there. A few days later, a fire, another, another fire broke out on levels two and three, destroying the artwork that remained. The fire or the circumstances around it have always been very suspicious and believed by most experts to have been a cover-up for the theft of these pieces of art. Recent events actually shed some light on maybe what had happened and give credence to this theory, as in 2005, some 16 antique vases were discovered on display at the Pushkin Museum in Moscow. In 2011, in an art auction, one of the masterpieces thought to have been destroyed was put on auction by a private vendor. The man is said to have inherited the masterpiece from his father, a Soviet soldier stationed here in Berlin, who told him that he bought the masterpiece from a street vendor. In more recent times, in 2016, a further 59 sculptures, also believed to have been destroyed in the fire, were also discovered at the Pushkin Museum of Moscow. In 1946, the bunker itself, though, was destroyed by the Soviets. And like where we just came from at uh, in Humboldt Hain, the uh, bunker remains were turned into an artificial hill, which today is known as Bunker Hill. So that is what happened to towers number two and three. But what about tower one, or this so-called zoo tower, which by far was the most notorious in the entire network because of its location in defense of the government district and its heavy use in the defense of the Reichstag. Well, after the war, Zoo Tower would come under the responsibility of the British, who, unlike their French and Soviet counterparts, would manage to completely destroy the tower itself, albeit over two separate attempts. Their first attempt in July of 1947 saw the British engineers pack the tower with some 25,000 tonnes of explosives. But after the dust settled, G Tower still remained, and a US journalist is said to have jokingly remarked, made in Germany. Undeterred by this, the Royal Engineers would spend the next four months uh, drilling some 35,000 tonnes into the remaining structure, and their second attempt would prove successful with the structure completely destroyed. Later, the area would become under the authority of the Berlin Zoo, and the foundation of Flak Tower No. 1 now makes up the hippopotamus enclosure. The parks that surround these flak towers today uh, are some of Berlin's uh, best and enjoyed by not only locals, but tourists alike. So that is what remains of the Berlin flak tower network today. Please let me know your thoughts in those comments down below. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Uh, if you'd like more content from me, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you next time on the front.